Some ancient men had a ridiculous fashion sense that would rival modern clowns. From balloon trousers to pointed shoes, these men weren't entertaining children at parties. They would dress for the party. They wouldn't mind adding a bejeweled headdress or armor for the finger. Yes, ancient men had a penchant for eccentricity. We present some of the most insane fashion statements our patriarchs have made over the years. Imagine runway looks that mix the extravagance of Hollywood with the bravado of pro sports. No wonder, right said Fred, thought he was too sexy for his shirt. Let's jump in. We begin with the Chinese finger armor. Yes, an armor to protect the finger. Of all the places that an enemy can target, ancient Chinese men were obsessed with protecting the finger. Of course, the finger armor had other uses, which we'll come to, but its primary purpose was to keep the finger safe from slashes and cuts. But that's a bit weird, because why would an enemy aim for a tiny part of the body when the head or the torso or even the leg is there for the taking? Anyway, since the entire idea seemed ridiculous to them, they probably came up with different uses for the armor. One of them being a status symbol. Think of it as ancient nail art meets medieval gauntlets. The ancient Chinese royalty wore finger armor as part of the royal regalia. Diplomats and other government officials also donned the armor to signify their importance. Often their armor was made from gold and replete with complex designs that matched their statuses in society. Of all people who donned finger armor, archers had the most practical use of the accessory, and for obvious reasons. Repeated stringing of the bow over a long period can cause injury to the finger, hence the need for armor. The armor kept the finger safe from bruises and welts. Just remember to be careful when picking your nose. If you think finger armor was an eccentric fashion item that had little practical use except to show off, then what will you make of the Viking's beard jewelry? Yes, jewelry for the beard. I'm having visions of ZZ Top. The Vikings had an abundance of precious stones, metal, and bones. So what better way to use them than to design their beards with them? Talk precious metal conversation. Meanwhile, beard jewelry wasn't for the ordinary citizen. It was the preserve of the high and mighty, and I presume the number of stones and metals one could fit into their beards was a sign of their ranks. Interestingly, though, the Vikings seemed to have a more practical use for the beard jewelry, which I suspect was the original reason for the accessory. According to research, the beard jewelry helped to keep their beards tidy and manageable. For those who've grown some whiskers over the years, you can understand how difficult it can be to keep them looking neat and attractive. Keeping them from tangling up and becoming naughty is a mountain climb. The same applied to the Vikings. Modern men have shampoos, oils, and conditioners to give their whiskers shine. Vikings had beard jewelry. Any bearded men or beard admirers in the house? Show me by hitting the like button. For those who aren't beard fans, show it by subscribing to this channel. Let's clear this out once and for all. While the Vikings wore jeweled beards as a sign of their status, the Muggle men wore jeweled turbans as a sign of regality and sophistication. For those who aren't familiar with the ancient Muggles, they were an early modern empire in South Asia that stretched from the Indus River to northern Afghanistan. The men preferred to wear turbans. Most importantly, they loved bejeweled turbans, which is practical. But here's where it gets insane. The number, size, and quality of jewels in the turban symbolize the wealth, rank, and power of the wearer. Thus, the competition was fierce. Every man wanted to show his power by ordering intricate designs for their turbans. They cared less for their clothes or sandals. Bejeweled turbans were the thing back then, and they completed the whole look with feathers from exotic birds. Talk about sophistication and class. While the ancient Chinese and the Muggles showed class and wealth with jewels, the Norse Vikings showed their prowess with bones and teeth. No, not human bones, you hedonistic aficionado. The Norse Vikings, different from the ones I mentioned earlier in the video, they loved to hunt all kinds of beasts. The more dangerous the beast, the more respected the hunter. To display their hunting prowess, the Viking men often removed the animal's teeth or bones and hung them around their necks. The bravest and strongest men were often identified by the number of bones and teeth that they displayed. Aside from showing off, the Vikings believed that the bones and teeth warded off evil and kept them safe. They thought that the items contained the spirit of the animals, and that spirit fought off the minions of darkness, which I find interesting. 
So, those who hung the bones of deer, rats, and rabbits would have these creatures fight off evil? Then they must have some serious kung fu skills, like the kung fu panda and his warriors. This is why they preferred hunting lions, leopards, hogs, tigers, and eagles. Because the mere mention of their names was potent enough to keep evil away. Right, moving on. Let's head straight to the south where the Mesoamerican men wore ear spools as a sign of wealth and status. The rich men often wore ear spools made from precious stones such as jade and obsidian, while those from the lower class used bones. The men also wore ear spools as the final part of the rites of passage. Boys who were transitioning into adulthood were given these decorations as a sign of their bravery and resilience. It was to remind them of the pain of transitioning and to prepare them for life as a Mesoamerican, which wasn't a bed of roses. Devotees of certain deities would don the earpiece as a sign of worship, dedication, and protection. While they created huge holes in their earlobes to fit the spools, the Mayans wore decorative headpieces made from exotic birds. The man's appearance, especially at important festivities, was incomplete without a multicolored feathered headdress to complement their looks. Aside from showing off their statuses, it helps them to woo the pretty maidens as well. Most men took their time to design their hats because they knew the girls would be watching. But seriously, when did we as men start to be afraid of colors? Men who cared less for their appearance often paid the price of loneliness, which was better than being arrested by the fashion police of ancient Rome. The Romans enacted sumptuary laws that were designed to limit the unnecessary display of opulence. It specified the amount of food that could be present at a banquet, the number of gold earrings a woman could don, and the type of fashion each gender should indulge in. Men were restricted to togas and garments. But that's not the weird part. The law dictated what each member of the social structure could wear. For example, commoners couldn't be caught putting on garments that were dyed with expensive purple. Or they would have to answer to the fashion police. Imagine a fashion police regulating your wardrobe choices. Like Anna Winter, dictating what everyone can wear. The Persians, though, were more liberal in their dressing, allowing men to wear whatever suited them and whatever color was reflected of their mood and status. Now that's freedom. According to research, Persian men were the first to wear trousers, which were practical for their time and work. They did a lot of horse riding and were almost always on the battlefield. So, trousers came in handy because those leg garments provide more mobility than traditional garments. Of course, they wore those huge balloon trousers that are common with modern clowns or MC Hammer. But their outlook wasn't as intriguing as the long pointed shoes of men from ancient Mesopotamia. These shoes were long on purpose because they functioned as a canvas for vibrant patterns and intricate designs. Imagine going out for an occasion and having all eyes on you because you donned the longest shoe with the most spectacular design. You're sure to be bumping to Tupac's hit song, All Eyes On Me. Ancient Egyptian pharaohs adorned themselves with gold jewelry, elaborate headdresses, and even gold sandals. According to the principle, golden and modest, their opulent accessories symbolized power and divine connection. Imagine a combination of Drake's bling and Elton John's flamboyance. Pharaohs were the original style icons. But wait, did you know that some sources suggest that jewelry, especially ear piercings, allowed for the capture of specific frequencies called divine? So jewelry could have an absolutely different meaning. Men in ancient times did make crazy fashion statements, but what they did for love will shock you. Click on this video and see if you'd be willing to ever rip out a tooth for love. And I'll see you there. And as always, thanks ever so much for watching.